BCE, and is the origin of the garments rolled in blood. So if you heard the Pope's speech, it was a historic speech last December where he called for the end of the garments rolled in blood. <clears throat> the garment uh, was the sacred vestments of the initiates who went through the origin of the actual word of baptism. They were garments of linen and they would parade through uh, blood, uh, usually underneath, walk a walkway, and as the blood dripped on their garments, then they were baptised. If you want a contemporary example of that, go and rent the film Gladiator. And when Russell Crowe and the Gladiators are going into the arena for the first time, the big German actor puts his arm on, on uh, Russell Crowe's shoulder and says, the gods love you, you know, uh, blood is their colour. And what they're going underneath is they're being baptised to Mitra before they enter the arena. That was the act of baptism that they were going through. So um, Ides of March and the murder of Kaiser, Julius Kaiser, Julius Caesar, but it's pronounced Kaiser, was the um, birth day and the death day, the day that Mitra was crucified. That's how he died. He was crucified on the same day. And that was the Idus of March in the Roman calendar or the 14th of Nisan from uh, Nisag, which means the first fruits, which means uh, the offering. And it also, and it comes from Sumerian. Nisag uh, comes from Sumerian. So a very, very ancient principle. And it was the birthday of Isaac in the Bible. So all the pointers are there. Now what happened is Julius Kaiser decided to separate to a sun-worshipped calendar and so it became uh, the idols of Mars became the 14th of March and uh, the calendar that was continued in the old form of Mithraism remained the 14th of Nisan celebrating a ceremony of Passover where there was the death, the birth, the death and the resurrection in three days. Now I know these things are very controversial. Obviously it sounds controversial because I'm talking about a strange character called Mitra about ceremonies that are traditionally associated with Christianity and Judaism. But nonetheless, that's the significance of the Idols of Mars. I mentioned that last century the elite architected the end of their covenant and their covenant was a covenant to Mitra, the origin of the blood sacrifice, the blood atonement. And only very few knew that. But they used a living being as the celebration of illumination because the elite in Rome connected Mitra, who was considered the illuminated one, the one that brings you illumination, with the word Lucifer being the one of illumination. And of course the Jesuits made the connection between Mitra and Lucifer being one and the same. So they picked a particular character who was amiable, who was smiling, who was happy, who was apparently an innovator, even though he failed school and even though he was married to the real brains and even though it was his wife who had her name on the patents, and even though it was his wife who won the Nobel Prize, it was nothing for the Jesuits to spin the story that he was the genius. And his name was Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein became the great illuminator of the 20th century. And today, he's still regarded by most people as the father of illumination illumination Lucifer I'm not saying he's Lucifer but I'm saying that's what he represented to them and apart from the fact he was in the right place at the right time he was born on March the 14th alright 
Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, we're going to take a call with Ron, but I I mean, that's absolutely fascinating because, uh, again, is, yeah, he was the father of uh, the special relativity, which is of time. Uh So, so we see that, that, uh, you know, that gatekeeping of time was, uh, was used. Uh, Ron, we're going to uh, take a a question from you. Ron, you're on the air. Hello, Brian. Hello, Frank. How you guys doing? Good. Good, good. Good. Hey, a couple of things on your EDP process, Frank. Did you finish the the court side where you put the letters rogatory, stuff like that in there? I'm finishing at the moment because um, what happens is when the two witnesses take over the process, yes. the rogatory becomes the original party. So the original party then becomes a rogatory to the two witnesses. It's a role reversal, yeah? Right. They they reverse roles all the time, but but it it actually brings it keeps the it keeps the um, the original party in the loop because you initiated it, the witnesses take over, and you're the witness to the witnesses, and that's when you come back at the final judgment. All three of you come back together. Oh, so do you think you'll have that process done by the end of the week? Yes. Okay. Good. <clears throat> um. Been reading the D Day Magisterium. What yep. a book. And I have two questions. This is regards to chapter three, part thirteen. It is there's a statement here at point two it says Who think you know know nothing and then point three yet within you lies the rarest of gifts and the code of soul. S-O-L. I think it's referring to two different genetic codes that were placed in us when we were manufactured or designed. Can you describe the rarest of gifts in the code of soul? Yes. Or soul. The Homo sapiens species possesses something that it should not possess at such an early stage of its evolutionary path. It should not and would not if, if, if not for the way that we were manufactured from primate species. And it is a code of knowledge that took literally millions of years of evolution to accomplish. And that is the code that enables us to connect directly and consciously aware, not just instinctively aware, but consciously aware to the divine. Call that astral travelling, call that divination, call that clairvoyance. It exists. There's more than enough evidence to show that it exists. I'm not talking and asking people to take an act of faith. Our ability, call it, um, call it uh, telekinesis, all these things come into it. Our ability to innately know knowledge is not something that evolved from this earth and from the development of the Homo sapiens species. It comes from hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years of war and peace and learning and research and mistakes and regret. And when we were manufactured, those that manufactured us unwittingly reassembled the code that was stopped in them into us. Now, if you believe the secret knowledge that they have kept there in front of us from the Gnostics, from the Ixos, from the Egyptians, from the mysteries of the Nazarenes, the truth seekers, and I hope people know who I'm talking about, you see that they understood the significance of the Adam and Eve story, that Adam was able to name the animals How on earth could he have that knowledge? They did not give him that knowledge. The Elohim, plural, did not give. 
Adam that knowledge? How in the hell did he get that knowledge? So that is the soul code. Okay. Now, if you read the Gnostics and if you read even the traditional Bible, you find that Adam gets banished from heaven and Adam is cursed by the Elohim in the process. That curse is where he, he says, I will teach all these negative things. Well, that teaching process in the banishment of heaven is the creation of the second soul, the dark soul. Mm. That when the dark soul was perfected also was able to tap into the divine. So we are in the extraordinary position of possessing not one, but two means of connecting to the divine. And I, and I, I assure you, this is unprecedented in the universe let alone the Milky Way, there would not in the, in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of higher order species that exist throughout the universe, but because of vast different distances, can very rarely ever connect to one another. Of those hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions and billions of star systems, there is probably not one that has two methods one of the light and one of the dark to connect to the divine. Can I, uh, I just want to read this uh, little passage here for the audience. Uh, it's um, <clears throat> chapter 11.25. It says, in the code of genes, they did implant the soul code of the greatest of all wisdom born out of billions of years. No greater treasure there be in the universe. Unbelievable. Yep. Anyway, Frank, okay. yeah. yep. can you point us to where, I, I am sure you have written about this, where do we learn how to connect to this source? I mean, I do it lightly, but it's. I would like to train myself better. That's what your cater is. Yep. Yucadia is, is an assistance. If you read, and I, I mean this, if you read The Journey of UCA, and, and forgive me for my typos, <laughs> and then you read The Journey of Self, and then read the patents, and then actually read the canons, you will have physically altered your brain. Your brain will be physically altered. And I believe that. And when you when your brain is physically altered, your ability to tap into the divine is instant. You don't need to meditate. You don't need to say abracadabra. Your ability is every bit as as mine. There is no difference. Oh, um, <laughs> you forgot to tell the audience that you were born on March 14th also. Maybe a slight yeah. coincidence? No oh, coincidence. Yeah, it's, co it's all coincidence. I know. Thanks, Ron. Sure, bye. Thanks so much, Ron. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, we don't get a chance to uh, talk about these uh, uh, types of uh, uh, conversations. And again, it's it's all relevant uh, because, I mean, everything is, is valid in the conscious field. Uh I ask uh, listeners who have questions for Frank to get into the queue, and uh, it's star eight, star eight for questions. Uh, Frank, how are we doing on the chat there for uh, for some questions? Yeah, um, uh, I've got a question. Okay, Paris Speed says, has, uh, has Australia claimed my birth bond from Argentina when I become a citizen? Yeah, there's a transaction. When you, when you become a citizen of a new country, there is a trade transaction between the country of birth and the new country. How that goes, I'm not clear. I would love to be clear, but what they do with birth certificates and SESA KVs is so secret that even amongst their own ranks, very, very few people know. So I can't give you a straight answer, but I would presume there must be some balancing of the account. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Frank. Uh, we're going to take a uh, a call from a better way. Better way, you're on the air with Frank. 
Hi, this is Iris. How are you all doing? Doing well. Okay, I have a question. Um, I um, did go through um, uh, a court case with Vic 